Welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Crypto Lark coming to you from New Zealand, bringing you this April 15th edition of What is Happening in Crypto. Bitcoin up only half a percent in the last 24 hours, but resting at $8,069. Ethereum at $509, just under 1% up in the last 24 hours. EOS taking a big hit after the EOS DAC snapshot down 8% in the last 24 hours. Golem down 14% as the main net hype dies down. Mithril down 12% as well. Komodo up 9% in the last 24 hours in a potential move which is seeing accumulation of Komodo in advance of Block Nation, the first decentralized ICO. IOTA up 11.3 and SIA up 12.25%. Tim Draper sets 250,000 US dollar Bitcoin price target for 2020. A lot of numbers come out, guys. But this is interesting for me to cover because I think it helps put it all in perspective for you of where people who are really involved in the space see Bitcoin going. Now, if you bought the top at $20,000 and you've been strong enough not to sell yet, this is something to give you a bit of hope that in three years' time, you could see Bitcoin at a quarter million dollars a piece. That's some pretty serious money, guys. And of course, also puts it in perspective that if you're buying Bitcoin at around eight grand today, imagine where you might be in a couple of years. On to Japan. Yahoo Japan invests 40% stake in the crypto exchange. This, of course, is a real continuation that we see of more traditional businesses acquiring crypto assets. We saw, of course, Circle got Poloniex, MoneyX has bought CoinCheck, and now Yahoo has invested a 40% stake into a cryptocurrency exchange in Japan. German stock company will be coming out with a new app called Bison. Now, Bison is going to be available in German during the autumn, and there'll be an English version coming out soon after that. But this will be a cryptocurrency app. The more apps, the better. The more communities that can be brought into cryptocurrencies, the better. By the way, isn't that a beautiful animal? I love buffalo. Latvia could impose a 20% tax on cryptocurrency transactions. Now, Latvia has kind of been the outlier of the Baltic states as far as really going big into crypto. Lithuania and Estonia are super into it. So many projects are coming out of Lithuania at the moment. So many projects come out of Estonia. They've been very proactive and forward thinking. It's really unfortunate to see Latvia looking to impose a 20% tax. They're not in the news very often about cryptocurrencies. And the one time they are in the news, it's about potentially taxing cryptocurrencies, of course, which is only going to drive more and more business to their neighbors, Lithuania and Estonia. Over in Kenya, the central bank warns against cryptocurrency. Every couple of months, the central bank of Kenya comes out to remind people cryptocurrencies are bad. Bad. This is just a continuation in that line. But I don't think that many people in Africa are paying attention to that, as Africa is proving to be a place where cryptocurrencies are very, very popular. Like so much of the rest of the world, of course. Bermuda outlines cryptocurrency regulations to attract entrepreneurs. We've seen this quite a bit with different small island nations looking to bring in those big bucks. Of course, Malta has done this very successfully recently. And we've also seen a lot of other small island nations in the Caribbean, for example, Puerto Rico, a territory of the United States. But nevertheless, they are trying to attract those entrepreneurs and a lot of other places as well. Bermuda wants to hop on the blockchain train. Better late than never, Bermuda. Lafayette Parish in Louisiana considers development of municipal cryptocurrency and ICO. Now, I've kind of got two minds on this story because on the one hand, what you can see is that we do see these very small regional currencies coming up all across the world where people print their own money, have their own regional currency that they use outside of the major national currency and has actually been able to revitalize some of these more hard hit areas globally. Do we need an ICO for this? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. They openly say, well, we're kind of broke. We could use the money. Let's do an ICO and then issue out some, some cryptocurrency. We'll see how that turns out. Austin is piloting a blockchain 
to improve homeless services. Now, this is very interesting because if you're a homeless person, you, of course, might struggle with things like proving your identity, your health records. But if you can have, for example, just an iris scanner, so as long as someone doesn't cut your eye out, I guess, but so long as you can have something like an iris scanner, you can actually have your information registered on a blockchain where no matter what town you wash up into or what service you wander into, they're going to have your medical records, they're going to have what services you've been receiving recently, what your addiction problems are, all these in interesting things. This could be a really cool use for blockchain technology. Bitcoin under the skin. Why people are using subdermal microchip wallets. This is a pretty crazy story. Would you put a microchip wallet under your skin? That's some pretty serious security. Of course, someone can always just cut it out then too. I suppose, which uh, becomes extra problematic instead of just hitting you over the head and stealing your ledger. Well, they cut, cut you up and take out your microchip. I don't know if I would use that, but you guys let me know about it in the comment section down below. Would you have a subdermal microchip wallet? Interesting stuff. Over in South Africa, the first retailer in South Africa will be accepting PIVX. Nice. This is a small business trophy pies. Pretty cool. I would like to see, obviously, many, many more use cases for PIVX acceptance and cryptocurrency acceptance in general, but a nice story nevertheless. Bat, the Brave browser, passes 2 million active users. Fantastic. They're also planning to be dropping more basic attention tokens out to help grow the user pool. Of course, you can reward your favorite content creators on YouTube, as well as different websites that are signed up to the Brave browser to reward them instead of having to watch advertisements. Good business model. And finally, the guys over at Kenya will be having their alpha available to the community on Friday, the 20th of April. It's time to give away a wallet. It is our weekend wallet giveaway. We're giving away a wallet every weekend. Let's see who the winner this week is going to be. Who is our random retweet winner? Bartender DS will be winning a Ledger Nano S. If you want to be in, we're going to be doing another one next Sunday. All you have to do, come over here to Twitter, hit that retweet button, and you're in to win. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.